So dear brothers and sisters, let's go to Ibn Arabi's work of Fusus al-Hikam and see some of the teachings that he wrote about in there. We go to page 110 in the English translation. Then Harun said to Musa, I was afraid that you would say you have caused division in the tribe of Israel. And you would make me the cause of their division, since the worship of the calf divided them. There were some of them who worshipped it following and imitating the Samari. And there were some of them who refused to worship it until Musa returned to them so that they might question him regarding it. Harun was afraid that he would have that division between them attributed them. So obviously this is talking about the story of the calf that was worshipped by the people. And of course, uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salam tried to direct these people towards monotheism and not worshipping this idol. So Ibn Arabi quoted the verse and he comments upon this. So he says, Musa knew the matter better than Harun because by his knowledge he knew the one the people of the calf worshipped since Allah decreed that only he would be worshipped. When Allah decrees something, it must occur. So what does Ibn Arabi mean by these words? And we'll just read the Arabic text before explaining this and show the scan. فَكَانَ مُوسَىٰ أَعْلَمْ مِنْ هَارُونَ لِأَنَّهُ عَلِمَ مَا عَبَدَهُ أَصْحَابُ الْعِجْلِ لعلمه بأن الله قد قضى أن لا يعبد إلا إياه وما حكم الله بشيء إلا وقع. So Ibn Arabi here again he's basically saying that because Allah Azza wa Jal decrees that he should be worshipped he will be worshipped and that the people who were worshipping the calf according to Ibn Arabi's heretical beliefs were in reality worshipping, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal because according to these people whether these idol worshippers worship the idol or not in fact there is nothing that exists but Allah and Allah is being worshipped no matter what because according to their incorrect understanding and deviant understanding Allah said that he must be worshipped and whether someone worships an idol it still all goes back to Allah Azza wa Jal and of course this is against what the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam have taught especially of these people who say that there is no existence but Allah that nothing exists but Allah Azza wa Jal and that in reality, the reality is, they say, that there is no existence but Allah. And everything else, for example, is like an illusion. This, of course, contradicts the teachings of the Imams. And we'll quote a hadith on that, inshallah. But what Ibn Arabi again is saying is that these people were in fact worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. So again, Musa knew better than Harun because by his knowledge he knew the one the people of the calf worshipped since Allah decreed that only he would be worshipped. So according to Ibn Arabi's Kufri uh, deviant teachings, Allah is basically still worshipped. So then what is the point of, you know, worshipping Allah becoming a monotheist? You can worship idols and according to Ibn Arabi's distorted beliefs, you can still be someone worshipping Allah. And then we find here, this is the part which is very crucial in understanding their belief and why they believe this, why they believe that even by worshipping idols, you are still worshipping Allah, or these people are still worshipping Allah. فَإِنَّ الْعَارِفَ مَنْ يَرَى الْحَقَّ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So according to Ibn Arabi, in his Fusus al-Hikam, as we quoted, these polytheists in the time of Musa, these mushrikeen, were in fact worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. They were worshipping the calf, of course. But in reality, 
Allah decreed that he must be worshipped. So whether you worship an idol or not, you are worshipping Allah. This is according to their understanding, their distorted understanding of the ayat of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because according to many of these types of Sufis, in reality nothing exists but Allah and they see Allah Azza wa Jal in everything. If someone comes along and says everything is a sign of Allah, we can agree on that statement. That for example, I remember there was one brother who he said that even if you see some excrement, some feces of a dog on the street, you can say it's a sign of Allah. And someone said, no, this is what you're saying is completely wrong. He said, no, even this, you might think it's something offensive, but it proves, for example, the digestive system that Allah Azza wa has created in animals, which are also creation. If we say, for example, everything can be a sign of Allah, that's fine. Not that everything is Allah Azza wa or that nothing exists but Allah Azza wa And this is the deviant teachings of Ibn Arabi that they call, they charge, you know, for $75 to uh, take courses and study his words. They also go to Qom, some of these students waste their time, you know, not going to the hadith of Ahlul Bayt salam, but going to study the commentary of personalities such as Ibn Arabi. This is what these people do, and this is his type of Kufri teachings, where he, Ibn Arabi, um, the heretic Ibn Arabi basically stated that the people the polytheists were worshipping, in fact, worshipping Allah. And this is because they have a wrong understanding of the verses of Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah Azza wa Jal gives free will for people to worship Him. And of course they must worship Him. But they have that free will to test them to see whether they will worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Or they will go worship these idols, which in fact were only made due to the power Allah Azza wa Jal gave them. They wouldn't have been able to carve and make these idols if it wasn't for Allah Azza wa Jal creating them and giving them this power. So everything is subservient to Allah Azza wa Jal, yet these people, they still chose to worship idols. And according to Ibn Arabi, this is worship of Allah. So this is the type of kufri, deviant, heretical teachings that have been taught or put in Fusus al-Hikam in the teachings of Ibn Arabi. And some Shias choose to do in-depth commentaries trying to go deeper into the kufr of Ibn Arabi. Now some might say, okay, you're just taking it from your perspective. Um, have you actually spoken to those people who claim to be Shia and they take from Ibn Arabi? Have you spoken to them? Have you asked their reasoning? Yes, I have. I had uh, one teacher before and I got on with him very well, a very nice person. I don't mention his name. But I asked him before many years ago, I said, what is the point of us taking from Ibn Arabi? What is the point of us taking from him? And he replied, oh, uh, in terms of our beliefs, mixing our beliefs with Ibn Arabi's heretical beliefs. He says, we take the good and we leave the bad from him. But this is absolutely pointless, dear brothers and sisters. This person in his beliefs, and many people can refer back to his books and discover other deviance that he said, even that the Mukhalifin, many of the Mukhalifin even condemn him, although we don't care about them, but they still condemn him as well because they also realize some heretical beliefs, although they themselves have this. He said, we take the good and we leave the bad. But again, Ahlul Bayt salam directed us to them. Why do we go to Ibn Arabi? It's like me having two glasses of water. One of them, let's say, is contaminated with dirt. And one of them is pure. Would I go to the contaminated glass and try to filter out the dirt with a sieve and then drink it? No, there would be no point of doing so. Rather, I would go to the pure source. And then I would try to establish, for example, what is from Ahlul Bayt or what has been said by them. Can we take this narration from them? You make an effort to see what is from Ahlul Bayt and what are their teachings rather than making an effort to try and make some commentary on some deviant Sufi heretic. And as we know, Imam Baqir alayhi salam said about this uh, of everything, for example, being one or the creation, there being some tashbih, he said, Inna Allah khilwun min khalqihi wa khalqahu khilwun min. That very, very rarely Allah is distinct from his creation and his creation is distinct from him. Imam Baqir alayhi salam is showing in this narration and scholars quoted who they speak against some of these deviant Sufi originated beliefs that 
there is no comparison to Allah Azza wa Jal. You cannot say nothing, everything, there is nothing in ex existence but Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is clearly distinct from his creation according to the Imams and there can be no comparison. Otherwise, if we compare Allah Azza wa Jal to his creation or say that he incarnated himself into some of his creation like some of the Ghulat say or the Christians say, there is comparison there. And then we are limiting Allah Azza wa Jal. إِنَّ اللَّهَ خِلْوٌ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ وَخَلْقَهُ خِلْوٌ مِنْ Verily, Allah is distinct from his creation and his creation is distinct from him. This is a type of teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam which refute this invalid type of belief which has unfortunately penetrated the Shia community for many years.